Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. It's lovely sunshine in the morning, the sky is absolutely blue, but it was very, very cold last night. I think we're in high pressure where we'll get cold nights and hot days. What we'll do today is we'll, the garlic and the onions arrived last week, so we're going to pop those in today while we've got this nice dry weather. I'm putting them under a tunnel this year just to try and protect them a little bit from the harsher wind. It's the wind that really gets to this, this bed. Now the garlic we'll put in at this end, I'm putting it at this end because the ground is dries out a little bit quicker at this end and garlic don't like to be stood in the wet so we'll put the garlic at this end and the Japanese overwintering onions at that end. Your garlic cloves, there's three still to plant, I've put two rows, three rows in, this will be the fourth row, there'll be plenty for us. You just plant them, the flat end down like that. What I want to show you, if you can see all this white that's on them from the seed, if you can get some of that off, it is actually a waxy coat that, oops, that's not very good. It is a waxy coat that stops the water getting to the seed. So if you can break it off a little, then the moisture will get to the seed better. You can't get every bit off. I'll let the wind take that. Likewise with your onions, if there's a loose skin on them, do take it off. It just helps them out some root down, that'll be fine. We'll just pop these in. Just going to loosen the ground a little and then we'll pop them in about three inches. Remember that when they start rooting they'll push the cells up anyway so if you get them too close to the surface they'll finish up on top. So just under the about three inch will be plenty of them. Get it the right way round and then just cover them up. I have marked it out. Just cover the whole bed. And now I put four rows in, so I put markers in just so I know for when if I get weeds and I want to hoe, I'll keep away from the lines. Best to keep them weed free if possible. Now we'll put some of the Japanese overwintered onions in. We call them Japanese because it came from Japan, but they're actually grown in this country now. Now, this is the onion bed. It'll be the onion bed for all our onions this year, for our peas, our beans, our leeks. This is now bed B, which has been prepared. If you remember that how I prepared it, I double dug it and I put manure in the bottom spit and in the top spit and then when I raked it down ready for these onions I put my jam jar with the holes in and I filled it with hoof and horn and I sprinkled that on as well then just raked that in that was the preparation I'll just show you the depth we went to on this bed this is just a cane and if you just push it in that's the bottom that's the clay bottom it's on there. So I know that it's been dug to two spits or near on two feet deep. So we know this soil is good and it will carry a second crop after the onions. The whole of this bed B will be dug like this. It's rather hard work but well worth it. And we know these onions are going to do fine. Now the onions we put in, I put two rows of white, which are called snowball. I put in two rows of brown or golden, which are over there and there, which are called radar. And I'm going to put two rows of red. One will be electric and the other one will be called red winter. 
just trying two different sorts of the red. We're struggling a little bit with reds on this garden, so I'm hence putting them under the net and changing varieties a little to see if we get one that does a bit better. We know they'd do all right. These struggle a little. These are the onions from Browns we're putting in. These are called electric. I'm going to open them and sort them as I put them in. Right, these are the onions we're going to use. If they've got a long neck on them, just take it off. Because that will stop the, if it folds over, it will stop the, the green leaf, if you like, coming through. So that one's fine. If you get anything like this on them, just peel that off. And then again, just take the top off. That one, it's marked and it feels a bit soft around the bottom. That will be rejected. And I should reject that one anyway, it's too small for me. So they're rejects, they're good ones. So just take that off, look. Just take those off as you can. They're good, they're not as good as you can see. You will get these in your packets, there's nothing you can do, but just reject them, don't put them in. Likewise, this one, can you see it's got mildew on it? Or mould? That is soft, that's rotten. I don't know why they put these in. There you are, so we reject those. I'm not even... I'm not even going to put that one back in the packet. I don't want it nowhere near the onions I'm using. When I'm planting them, I put the line in ready. Just move those so you can see. I get a few nice ones in my hand. It's a case of sorting as you go. And then the distance I'm going to put between is just the blade of the trowel. Okay? Then if they do get pretty big, they've got a bit of room. Now, it's no good just grabbing them and trying to push them in because you'll probably damage them. So what I do, I get the trowel and I just go along like that. Just blading in if you like. Then I leave it to mark, yes? And then I start, because I've softened it, I can get them quite well in. Look. Just below the surface and then I go once you get going, it's quite quick. Put them pointy end up, remember? You see how it's nice and loose so they'll push in well. I'll just put one more there. That one's fine. Them two, too small. Don't want them, we'll leave them there. We'll put that one in. Um, we'll put these six in and then I'll leave you and get on, okay? Loosened it. Like that. And then we just mark it off. And pop it in. There you go. Just below the surface, because when I rake down afterwards, I'll cover those up. Just go along. If you're on heavy land, you've got to do this, and you must never get them in. Then just mark. And just put them in, nice straight line if possible. You see they go in a lot better when you do it like this. They're gliding in. Put your mark where you finish and then you move. One more. There's the last one there. Got a bit of skin on it, look, so we'll just take that off. There. Right, we'll mark up where we're done to. That's how we plant the onions. So I'll plant this line and then we'll look at the red winter ones and see what they're like. Right now, the, the red winter I got from the garden centre, they buy tailors. We'll, uh, we'll put these in and see what we can do with these. I paid £2 for them. £2 for one row is not so bad. Just take a handful out and we'll have a look what we've got. 
As you can see, some are already shooting. Not bad bulbs. That one's a different colour look, so we don't want that one. That's a brown one in monk's red. That's too small. That's too small. Let's thin them down a bit and then we'll have a look. We might be alright with those. We'll put that in. No, we won't. We'll reject it. Same again, look. That one's useless. They're very poor, really. That one's rotten. We'll take that one out. We'll plant so That one's got rot on it. Can you see it? So that one come. We're not going to have many to put in at this rate. Right, so we'll get them put in. Same as before, look. If they've got a long top, just snip it off. That's just dirt on there, so I'm quite happy with that one. We will lay the trowel. We'll start a little bit away from the edge. Take those off. Pop that in there. We'll just do this handful. There's a big one there, look. And I'll have to trail some more out. They so just move off afterwards, so it doesn't matter if you slightly cover them because the, the rain will wash the soil down so they'll be popping through again. The beauty of the mesh over the top, at least the birds won't be pulling them out this year. I'll finish this row and then come back to you. There you are, that's the tunnel put up and the onions put in over wintering. We've used one of the old tunnels because it's not a permanent one this will be gone in the spring. It'll be down on the cabbages. We've got all new covers for next year as you can see it's one or two holes getting in this, this old one. We bought all new covers these have lasted four years they've done very very well I'm well pleased with them. And the other thing is, I've changed to put in string and plastic wire between to hold the mesh because the, the galvanised wire doesn't last long enough, it goes rusty and marks the mesh. So that's now string or plastic coated wire. Now we're just going to do a little bit of harvesting a couple of Swedes. We'll, we'll have to harvest the beetroot we've put in because we put it in as a catch, catch crop, so we'll just take that out. A couple of leeks, a few turnips for putting in the soups, etc. I'm going to harvest what's left of the cabbages and put those into store. And I might even pour a few carrots, I don't know yet. Definitely no Brussels. We won't be harvesting Brussels today because Diane wanted some in the wheat so I nipped down and harvested them for her. Really need a frost on them to sweeten them so I'm going to hold her off for a short while. But we'll get these Swedes and the other bits up and let you see them, okay? We're just harvesting the Swede, I'll just take it out. Take it off. It's a good one, we're getting one or two marks on it where this is the trouble with this ground. But that'll cut out, that's perfectly alright. I'll just take these off. Take them off down there, it'll be fine. Now when you're field lifting these, what we do with your machete would be take the bottom clean off and then more we'll have big slices out the bottom because that gets rid of all these markings. Probably slugs they are, look, they've been chewing at it. That's the problem with leaving them in the ground. Around here we can leave them in the ground for a bit longer, but if the weather turns really bad, I shall lift them like that and then store them in the shed. Not cutting too much, just little bits. 
Well, that'll be fine for eating now. I do believe you want two, don't you? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I've lifted this one because it's got a couple of split marks on. That's where it's grown a bit quick. But we'll take the take the soil off. And prefer to keep the soil down here. Not quite so big, but it should be very nice. And just clean it off look, with a knife. Nice, very sharp. There you go. Not quite so big as that one, but I'll be fine. The other thing to tell you to watch out for, I'll just take that off tidy. If they're growing and you see lots of rot around the top, you'll find that that rot has gone right down inside and rotted the inside. So when you cut it in half, it's more or less hollow and rotten inside. Watch out for it. If you see one, lift them out straight away and get rid of it. So that's a couple of Swede, they're good. Now, earlier in the summer, or late in the summer, I had a few beetroot seed left, so we put them in behind me, as you can see. I think they're about ready for lifting out, so we'll take those out next. Now, as I said, we had some seed left, so I just put them in here as a catch crop. So now, some's big, some small, but I'm going to lift a lot. Put them in the wheelbarrow and take them up for Diane to sort out for probably bottling. Some are small, some are very small, but they need to come out now. So we'll pop them in the barrow, and then that's still a nice, a nice little more someday. Look. We've already got enough beetroot stored away so some of this will be like a bonus if you like They're very very nice and tender and sweet down i'll right. pick them out and then show you the wheelbarrow full okay here we are then that's the beetroot gone there's just a, a few white lisbon there that will leave those in for the winter they'll thicken up now the beetroot's gone off them cold won't affect those at all they're fine but I'm just going to lift a few of these leaks now these leaks they're called below zero and they really have suffered with rust I won't grow this variety again they just don't like my area if you like so next year we'll try another one I don't mind a bit of rust, but these have really been loaded up with them. There you go, I just loosened them out. They make a good leak, but it's just too much rust on them for me. I'll dig four up and then I'll prepare them. Press the ground down. Be good practice for when I'm lifting the parsnips. Oh, you see, it's made a grand leak, but we're uh, that's it, right. one forward, you say. Mm -hmm. Press it down so it doesn't loosen the other ones. I'll just get two more. Well, there's the four we want, very nice leaks. Let's we'll say a bit of rust. I'll get them cleaned up, ready for taking up, and then show you them done. I've just lifted these few turnips from down the bottom. Again, they was put in as a bit of a catch crop after the potatoes, so they'd come fine. They they'll go in the suits, give it that lovely taste they will. So I'll just clean them off. Same again, top and tail, that'll do. Or tail and top. We'll give these a wash when we get up there, then we'll show you what we've harvested. Now, if you leave these. <coughs> 
in your garden too long to get them good size they'll go hard and woody and they're not very nice eating if you get them no bigger than these that's fine I'm just going to go in amongst these carrots and thin them a little bit by taking the bigger ones they are quite quite tightly packed in here so I'll get a few out and we'll see how we go there you go there's a few carrots that we've thinned some haven't quite made it but they're good ones but certainly better than last year in the clay we'll take those up and give them a wash now I've just got the harvest off I'm going to lift the remainder of the summer cabbage if you leave it too long it'll split so I'm going to lift it clean it and put it in the shed in one of these little trays and they'll store just as well in the shed for several weeks there we are that's the last of the summer cabbages some's a bit small but they're all very very solid they're good cabbage fairway they're called Excellent, that one will go in again. Here we are then, this is a lovely early autumn harvest. Now that's the last of the cabbages. Very, very good cabbage. If I left them in much longer, I'm sure they would split. Some lovely leeks. Always good, those leeks. There's some turnips, they'll be moved, made into the soups etc, they're very nice. A couple of cracking swedes, very nice. Um, the thinning of the carrots, I don't think we can call them thinning no more because they're getting quite big so we'll, we'll call those a pick of the carrots. And then we've got the catch crop of the beetroot which will be going as baby beetroot for preserving etc okay now that is a good a good little harvest right it's friday today so that'll be about it for this week i hope you've enjoyed it many many thanks for those people that have subscribed we do appreciate it it's i'm just looking i'll be glad when these grapes are gone and into wine maybe even better many many thanks for those people who subscribed we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week bye now